you discover music like in your early youth like are your parents musical or not really i was a i was a late bloomer um so i always liked like uh van halen and like rock and roll obviously um but my brother was a skater and uh he listened to more like uh punk hardcore stuff okay and he started playing bass um and i picked up and started he started having band practice at the house at my parents house and um i just started playing his friend's drum set just on a whim like all right and just started playing it and like oh this is cool this is fun and then I, I figured out I could play drums and then started playing his bass and then figured out I could play bass too. And then I started playing his friend's guitar and like, Oh, I can play guitar too. This is fun. And then, um, I spent from like age 15 or 16 from then just on teaching myself songs, um, which I feel like is the best way to learn an instrument. Um, uh, just using your ear and trying to figure out where things are in the fretboard and, you know, if you can do that, you'll you'll build a skill that will be um, so important um, and just uh, in your your playing. You know, it's just you can incorporate. You can hear what you're going to play before you play it. That right. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's totally. That's that's so important. Like, there's so many people. Like, the whole I don't really go on the internet, um, but I hear all these stories about like internet sensations now. These kids that just like learn all these crazy shred licks. But if you're like, yo, man, let's play a 12 bar blues and be flat. They'd be like, what? <laughs> you know what, I mean? like, right. what the fuck? Are, are you, are you speaking English right now? Like, yeah, 12 bar blues and be flat. You can't, you can't do that. You don't know what that is. Like, come on, man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's just the ear training is such an important skill. I feel, um, are you which, jamming with your brother at this point? Like do you, you and your brother jam? We started playing music together. Yep um and that's when i started my first high school my first band in high school um with him uh yeah so it's it's funny i, I never really took any lessons and i didn't really learn what the, te the technical names and approaches for music until i went to uh college oh okay so, yeah yeah so i just know like oh that's that's that scale and that's that scale and then once i got to college i'm like oh that's what you call that okay you what know. are you guys jamming? Like, what's your first jam, you and your brother? Oh, I don't like, even remember. Song? It's probably like Misfits tunes or like uh, Minor Threat. Oh, so like punk rock songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. My, my, I, I have to blame my brother for getting me into like hardcore punk. Um, but at that time, I was also like, you know what? I think I like the guitar playing in Metallica way better. You know, like, <laughs> right. like just list, listen, it's just so thrashy. I like thrash. Like, like nah, power chords are cool and all, but like I want to, I want to palm mute. That's that's the sound right there, judge, you know. Judge, judge, judge. Yeah, so I started getting more into metal, like you know, listening to more Slayer and Metallica and stuff like that. And he'd still be listening to his his punk and hardcore. And yeah, you didn't go, like you didn't that. learn like any Van Halen songs or like butt rock songs or anything like that. Oh, I was way into butt rock when I was a kid. Oh yeah, I okay. love I love the eighties, man. Um, like. You, would, you can't really call it butt rock, but like, I love Def Leppard. Yeah. Like that's, that's like classic rock, bro. You know, like Pyro Pyromania. Oh awesome. man, that record's great from start to finish. Um, okay. But no, I, I listen to some Poison. I listen to some Cinderella. Yeah. Cinderella. <laughs> Somebody save me. Yep. Yep. It's, that's a pretty that good ballad, record. That ballad, the ballad on that Cinderella record's killer too. Um, oh shit. Nobody's fool. Nobody's fool. Or. I'm not sure. Yeah, right, right. That was their first uh, hit off that record. That's right. Yeah, yeah Tom Tom Kiefer's voice. Wow, he's got a killer it's, rock voice, man, dude. They fucking range is insane, dude. Yeah, right. Holy oh shit! God, I, nobody, I, I can't nobody, we're close like to that shit. Yeah, nobody sounds like Tom Kiefer, man. He's just insane. Yeah, like I started playing, like I said, um, like Misfit songs and yeah, right. minor, minor Threat songs and stuff like that, and then. Uh, I finally graduated to learning um, uh, like Metallica songs and, and Slayer songs and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. And this is what's the first like, what's the first Metallica song you learned? 
Hmm. You know, it's what funny. I was right. Albums out at this point. So justice just came out. So I was like, I remember hearing like sonically that record for the first time being like, holy shit. That's so like, you know, technically now I can say it's like scooped. Right. But like, but I'm just like, that's so fucking balls tight and heavy. Oh my God. And I was just like, it blew my mind. Cause like, obviously like puppets didn't sound that scooped and like hyped. You know what I mean? Like, right. Dude, the kick drum on Justice is just tick, tick, tick. Right, right. Got more tick than a clock, man. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's like, holy crap, this is insanely sick. So I think I started learning like Blacken and uh, and Justice for All and wow. go, going through that record. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Just loving, loving the riffs. That could be like, I know this is like, kind of strange to say that that could be my favorite metallica record just what? because of the hold on just because of the impact it had on my life at the time right you know i know it's a crazy thing to say it's there's some absolutely great songs on that record dude great Freight ends of, Freight ends of sanity dude the whole after the you know the guitar se- section with like all the harmonies like those fucking riffs are undeniably like perfect yeah. Just badass, man. Shortest and, straw. Ah, oh, fuck. Dyer's it's Eve. Just, dude, Eve's it's fucking thrash masterpiece, man. A I know. It doesn't get any better, dude. It doesn't get any better. I love that shit. Oh, that's like right there. That's like the soundtrack of me learning how to downpick. You know, that's a that's, good. That's a good record to learn how to. That's some fucking brutally perfect downpicking right there. Sure is, man. Sure is. That and puppets. Playing show. You start playing shows with your band uh after maybe a little while after that yeah okay, but yeah. yeah i'm going i'm going to shows with my brother you know he he um he's bringing me all like the local hardcore and you know oh, punk shows wow cool. so yeah yeah i didn't really realize he was a big instrumental part of me getting into all that but um yeah thanks bro um <laughs> yeah and then we start playing together and uh we start getting booked uh, a couple shows here and there when we did not succeed at all uh Nobody really cared about us. Um, we, our shows were just meh. And then um, the craziest thing ever, we get kind of a following. And then all of a sudden, we're asked to uh, go to Japan and what? play Japan. Yeah. Are crazy, you, right? Serious? That's crazy. Yeah. Yes. It's in, For insane. What? For what? Like your hardcore? For a tour. Oh, yeah. Fuck. That's, <laughs> what band is this? Insane. What band? It was called It was called Aftershock. Okay. And And... So we were like, yeah, we'll do that. And we flew to Japan and fucking put, nuts. Played played a headline tour of five shows. And I'll never, ever forget that moment. How old are you? Where, How old are you at this point? Uh probably nineteen. Wow. Twenty. Yeah. Have you been late at this point? Oh yeah. 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 Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a virgin, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Um <laughs> Um, I'll never forget the feeling um, flying to Japan, seeing like a sold out venue of like, you know, it was only like 300 people, but still it was just like fucking awesome. Wow. And I actually think I was crying the first night. It was like, I can't believe something that I created is bringing joy to this many people across the world. This is incredible. And right. I believe it or not, I still have moments like that where like, We'll play a killer show like somewhere in Europe, and I'm like, "How the fuck is this happening right now?" Still, after 20 years of doing it, it still happens to me. Yeah. It's it's pretty incredible when you think about what we do, man. Like, like, like you realize how many lives your music has changed. Like, it's hit so many fucking people, man. You know, it's like, do you have those moments where you're just like, "Holy fuck, man! I can't believe all these people that are singing along with something that I made." Yeah. You know, it's it's an incredible feeling. It is. It is. Yeah. So, so that's that's the first time I I had that feeling, and I was just like, "This is insane, man! It's insane." That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's you and your brother's band. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive to just go to Japan and have like <laughs> some sold out shows and right, and then we'll we'll come home and play a club in Western Massachusetts for like twenty kids. 
Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were just the in 20, Japan. <laughs> yeah, we just had the sickest shows in Japan. Thanks for coming, you 20 dudes now. Buy a t-shirt. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a head fuck, too, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really weird. Like I, I never really took uh being in a band seriously at that point, I guess. Um it was more so like a hobby and you did it for the love of it. And, you know, I guess that was always the case with, with being in a band for me. I never thought, I always thought it was like impossible to be a successful band member or musician, Right. you know, your own band, you know, it's, it's a pretty difficult feat to achieve, man. It really is. Um, you know, we, we were lucky enough to, to be able to be able to do this and have it work out for us. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Do you get laid in yeah. Japan? I'm a very monogamous, monogamous individual, so I don't sleep around at all. So I did. I never have. No. Never been late in Japan. Never. Okay. I just went yeah. on this first trip. You know, like. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Uh, I had a girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Yeah. But how exciting though! And then you come back, and you're yeah. you're and now you're like, are you starting to lose weight now? Like, do you are you still like a chubby kid? Like. You, I've 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 lost some weight. Yeah, you become concerned yeah. with like, okay, I'm gonna I need to I'm in a band now. I need to like get in shape or something. Anything like yeah. that? Yeah, I think I was just like tired of feeling like shit all the time. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll just watch what I eat and exercise a little bit. <laughs> and well, now I've reverted to the fat me now over COVID. Um, but <laughs> you, got the, you got the COVID to, twenty. Oh uh, yeah, I got the twenty twenty twenty. The, the quarantine 15 turned into the 2020 20. 